All right, so we are looking at motivating employees and this quick recording will do it by looking at the process-based theories. So need-based theories have been covered elsewhere and this quick uh, lecture, video lecture, will do the process-based theories. So need-based theories, quick reminder, they talk about the needs we have internal to ourselves. So something we're either born with, we have a need for shelter, safety, and uh, friendship. The um, process-based theories talk about how we use logic to think about and have emotions around events and things that happen to us. So that is what process-based theories is. They focus on how we move through this process and this is a general process here that apply to all of the process-based theories that we will be looking at. And we are looking at a couple of them. So we start with number one, where individuals, employees actually analyze their environment, the situation around them. That's number one. We move to number two. We have some sort of reaction or feeling to what we actually were thinking. And then as a result of that feeling, we now react. There's some actions, there is some behaviors, um, and they come out of our feeling around what we were thinking about. And so for us to actually remember this process, I like to think about cab. A cab meaning a taxi, although nowadays we actually use Lyft or Uber, but back in the day where we actually were using the taxis. So, right, when you come to the exam, and you're going to have to remember, here is your cab for you. I, I don't have a pen, I just have my mouse pad, so definitely maybe a challenged cab, but you get the idea. So, cab, C, number one, stands for cognition. Very hard to make eyes without... Um, uh, pen here, but cognition. This is thinking about the environment. Number two is affect. Affect is our feelings that we have. So we have cognition, we think around the event, we have feelings in response, that's the affect, and after that comes our behavior. And all of that together makes our cab. So when you are thinking about the process-based theories, your little Memory technique is CAB, Cognition, Affect, Behavior. Here we will cover... Um, here's my alarm. Uh, here we will cover the um, equity theory first. Equity theory, if you remember from discussions elsewhere in the textbook, it comes back uh, here and there. We talk about fairness quite a bit is when we are comparing ourselves to somebody else that is called a referent other. So up here, top right corner, the person is you, and you are comparing yourself to somebody else, and you pick who that person is, and we call them a referent. So what you're comparing is what you put in to your job, because we're talking about organizations here, compared to what you actually get out of it and you compare that to what they put into the job and what they get out of it. And if you put in about the same and get out about the same, then we have equity. There's a stabilized situation and there is no concern for unfairness. However, if you actually input more than they do, or you get less outcome back than, than they do, then you feel inequity. You feel that you're getting less or doing more than them. So it's an unfair situation. Funny enough, when it's the opposite, when you feel that you either do less or get more, we tend to be pretty quick to justify that. But when they actually are benefiting compared to you, then we take action. So what are some of the reactions to inequity? Here are several uh, that we talk about. So the first one being, we can distort perception. So number one, meaning we're changing how we're thinking so that we are possibly changing our ideas around the reference. So we are somehow distorting perception 
to justify that inequity. The second thing we can do is we can increase the other person's inputs. So if you feel that they're not doing enough, find some more work for them, put them on another task or another committee or uh, assign something to them so that they work harder. Or you can work less hard. You can reduce your own input. So deliberately putting less effort forward, quantity or quality. You can try to increase your own outcomes. So for instance, you can go to your boss and try to negotiate a raise, an increased salary. Um, sometimes we see actually people stealing, so this is not okay. But we have uh, seen through research studies that people do thing, things to restore when they perceive this to be inequitable. We can also change the referent. So instead of comparing ourselves to somebody who is better off than you in the organization, you can pick somebody who is less, um, doing less in terms of getting what they should be getting or they're actually doing more for the organization. So now in comparison to them, you actually feel pretty good. You can also leave the organization or you can seek a lawyer's opinion if there's something that is really, really um, unlawful that is happening and you can change the situation that way. That is equity theory in a few seconds or less. So it's a theory that says that we compare our own um, what we get or what we do for organization compared to other people. So unlike need theories, this one is a comparison theory to other people. Need theories are internal to yourself and your behavior follows from your perceptions of unfairness or inequity. And that's the motivational piece. So you're motivated to behave in a certain way because of the inequity. Inequity is actually also beyond just equity theory. So equity theory really deals with this one right here, DJ, distributive justice. So DJ and equity are essentially the same things. So DJ is the degree to which the output that you receive are deemed fair. And remember, that's the outputs right up here, right? So the degree to which the outputs received are deemed fair. So that is distributive justice. We also have PJ, which is procedural justice the degree to which fair decision-making procedures are used. So, these are the processes and procedures by which the outcomes are distributed. So, these PJs need to be fair for everybody, equal for everybody to be, see, be perceived as being fair. There's a few ways we can identify PJ. Do we get advance notice? Do we get a notification that something is happening or changing or occurring? Do we actually have voice in the decision making? Can we input what we think? Do they listen to us? And if we're told something, do we get an explanation for it? All those things lead us to see that there is actually procedural justice. Thirdly, interactional justice, the degree to which people are treated with dignity and respect and kindness. kindness. So this is typically coming from our supervisor. Is your supervisor kind to you? Do they treat you with respect? Those are the basic foundational items for IJ, interactional justice. We also, when we are talking about fairness and equity, and I should say a lot of the time we use terminology like justice, fairness, and equity interchangeably, we are actually looking at something called equity sensitivity right over here. So some people might be more or less sensitive to situations that could be perceived as unfair. And that is what equity sensitivity is. So it's an individual difference, meaning it is different for each person, where different people feel different levels of distress when they feel that they're either over-rewarded or under-rewarded. So that might be why somebody reacts to a situation differently than you would react. So you're in a situation and you look at them and you're thinking, oh gosh, that's a little bit of an exaggeration. I can't even believe that they're paying attention to that. Well, maybe they just have a different level of sensitivity around that. Uh, much like personalities are different and values are different. We can also have different levels of sensitivity around equity. We have something called 
benevolence. These are the people that give, 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 and they don't really expect much in return. So this is going to be Bob who stays late. Uh, he doesn't matter that he's already clocked out. He's uh, cleaning up around the office. He's uh, rearranging the conference chairs around the conference table. He's making sure that his friend who really needs to get that uh, paper out before the deadline is getting that out before he is able to go home. And he's, Bob is really not expecting much in return. He understands that he's doing this free of charge for the organization. And so he is what we would call a benevolent. Opposite end of the spectrum. These are the entitled people. They are expecting to receive quite a bit and not getting much in return. So this is going to be Joe who is going to be leaving the office five minutes before he's actually supposed to leave. Uh, even though he's collecting a paycheck for those last five minutes, he's not even there, right? So he wants to receive a lot without actually providing much in return. Last little bit uh, here for expectancy theory, or I should say for process theories, is expectancy theory. So uh, this is Victor Room. Uh, he came up with this theory, and I think let's go with green maybe for Victor. So Mr. Doctor, I should say Doctor Room came up with this theory that basically says that we have a cognitive process, right? We've already established that we're working with processes here, uh, and employees go through making choices. And these choices are among the different voluntary responses that exist. So expectancy theory describes the cognitive process that employees go through to make choices among different voluntary responses. And the voluntary responses, that's the response on behalf of the employee. So how are they responding to certain things, to tasks, duties, assignments? How do they respond? So generally, we know that employee behavior, or room says, employee behavior is directed towards pleasure. We tend to prefer things that are pleasurable instead of those things that are painful. So we are moving towards certain outcomes and away from other outcomes. So that's the basic gist of this theory. We have three different evaluation places, and we also have three different questions we ask, right? So the first thing we assess is level of effort. L we look at whether or not the effort we put in leads to the level of performance we would want, right? So we start with effort. If I put in 10,000 hours, the 10,000 hour rule, will I get the high level of performance that is needed and also, will my supervisor notice that I'm putting in this performance? Thirdly, what are the outcomes? What level of outcomes do I get because of this performance that I did um, enact in and that my supervisor saw? So those three are the big buckets in expectancy theory. And to help us with this, we have three questions. So question A is called expectancy. So we ask, if I exert a lot of performance, will I perform well? That assesses this relationship. Question B, instrumentality. If I perform well, will I actually receive the outcomes? That's number B, or it's not number B, letter B. Valence, C. Will the outcomes that I'm receiving be satisfying for me? So generally, this theory says that if at any point in time these questions receive a no answer, in that instance, let's see what color do we work with here now. We'll pick the black one. The, the, the person, the employee, will not engage in that behavior. So if I exert a lot of performance... If I exert a lot of effort, will I perform well? Well, I'm going to put in the 10,000 hour. I'm going to learn to play the instrument, but I don't have a musical gene in my body. So even if I do the 10,000 hours, there is no way I will be able to play the piano. Boom. The expectancy would say this relationship falls apart and the person is not going to even try. Or 
let's say that I'm actually saying, okay, great, I'm going to play the, learn to play the piano. I'm putting in my 10,000 hours as I'm trying to find another pen color here and it's not working with me. There we go. Um, I'm going to put in the 10,000 hours and it will actually happen. I will get the performance that I want, but nobody wants to listen to me. So I want to play at family gatherings to make my family happy, but they could care less about the family or about piano. They really are into some other type of music. So boom, the relationship would fall apart here. It occurs here. We have the relationship going on here, but it disappears here. So again, nope, not worth putting in the effort. So if I see either of these relationships breaking, I'm going to say it's not going to happen. That's it for process-based theories. We talked about equity theory, fairness, as well as expectancy theory. Talk to you later.